So I love the fact that folks said Tennessee. Yeah. Did y'all knew it was Tennessee? We have had to work hard to make sure people see whiskey coming out of Tennessee, that there is super premium whiskey that comes out of Tennessee. And I just met a, a Michael Dyson, a couple people in the back, and they were asking about this brand. And I said, well, you know, it's fastest growing, independent American spirit brand in history and just happens to be run and owned by a black woman. So that, that are you, has not happened ever, 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 ever. And we, we there's a, a particular actor who I absolutely love and adore who came to me. Uh, he tracked me down. We've never used, we do not pay celebrities to endorse. If you see celebrities endorsing us on Instagram or anywhere else, that is because they love the brand. Half the time I get tagged in it and I have no idea who these people are. Like, not personally, I know who they are, but they'll tag me in it. And this particular actor, he had his PR people keep calling me and keep calling me until I responded. And when I responded, he literally had me on the phone for, it had to have been a good two hours, telling me about how important this story was to him, how important this brand was to him. And he says, I realize that every single time I go to a restaurant or a bar, I'm talking about your brand. I'm telling them the story. And it dawned on me that if you let me invest in your company, I can make money from this. <laughs> and at the time, I said, I'm not raising any money. I'm good. Uh, and he says, well, if I can't put money in your company, can I at least help you to tell the story? And he was that passionate about it. And I said, well, if I do another raise, you will be my first call. And if we ever tell this story in a cinematic way, you will also be my first call. And he was for both. So that's what we're going to watch. special home on a special piece of American land. Surprise is still here. This isn't a set. We're in Tennessee in the hills above Lynchburg. I want to tell you a story, a true story. Over 160 years ago, the side of steam and smoke curling into the sky just around that bend meant one thing to the people of Lincoln County. It meant the man they called Nearest Green was hard at work making the finest whiskey ever to come out of these hills. He took the same elements available to anyone else, earth, fire, water. He added generational skill, success, surely some failure. He put in everything he had. Most of all, he put in his heart. He created a spirit, an essence. What near screen did here, with this limestone, and that clear creek water, and those sugar maple trees, he gave birth to Tennessee whiskey. The technique nearest perfected of filtering his whiskey through charcoal made from sugar maple trees is still revered two centuries later as the Lincoln County process. 
His unique approach was most likely passed down to him from West Africa, where people historically filtered their water through charcoal to purify it. This single innovation in nearest hands would become the defining distinction between Tennessee whiskey and Kentucky bourbon. Friends and family called him Uncle Nearest, the first African-American master distiller on record, the founding father of Tennessee whiskey. His story went missing, untold for quite some time. Why? It's complicated. But what's important is that the truth has finally found the light, as it always does. Nearest's given name was Nathan Green. He was thought to have been born in Maryland sometime around 1820. We don't know a lot about his early life, but we do know that in the mid-1800s, he began to work on a farm here in Tennessee. This farm. Nearest Green was a slave here and later a free man. And this farm belonged to a man named Dan Call, a preacher. Well, Reverend Call wasn't only a preacher. He had a little side hustle. Yeah, a whiskey distillery. And Nearest Green was the one doing the distilling. The whiskey he made was unique in its smoothness. People said it was the best around. But this isn't just a story about a master craftsman and an innovator. It's a story of a friendship. Around the mid-1850s, a young boy came to work on Dan Call's farm. White boy, wasn't a privileged kid. The youngest of 10 siblings, motherless by four months old. Small for his age, but he wanted to work. And he helped the preacher out with whatever he could. But the constant smell of wood smoke and the mules and wagons shuffling back and forth up that holler caught his attention. He wanted to know what the deal was with all that. Finally, the preacher gave in. He took him to meet Nearest. This is Uncle Nearest, he told him. The best whiskey maker I know of. And he asked Nearest to teach his new young apprentice everything he knew about distilling. Nearest took the boy under his wing, taught him well. They became good friends. As the boy got older, he started selling this special whiskey all around these parts and other towns, even to soldiers fighting in the Civil War. He was a natural born salesman and entrepreneur. The 13th Amendment was ratified on December 6th, 1865. And soon after, Nathan Nearest Green was a free man. And that boy, a young man now, well, he purchased Dan Call's distillery and named it after himself. And of course, he asked his mentor and friend Nearest to be his first official master distiller. And they kept making and selling great whiskey. And during this time, for a good many years to follow, Uncle Nearest's involvement was widely known. His family became one of the most prominent in the area well-respected for their talents and success. And as his business grew, the young man built a new, bigger distillery on another plot of Lynchburg land. Uncle Nearest decided to retire from the game, but his sons, Eli, George, and Lewis, he continued to work for the distillery, as did his grandsons, Charlie and I. And that chore boy, who came to be a brilliant businessman, never let his friendship with and respect for Nearest Green and his family go unnoticed. Even after he became one of the most famous whiskey makers in all the world. His legal name was Jasper. Folks around here in Lynchburg still call him Uncle Jack. You know him as Jack Daniel. And now, 
you know nearest green. This home, this bottle, this foundation honor that man, his legacy, and his future, because he lives on. Uncle Nearest didn't just make great whiskey, he made history, and now you know that too. And to all those men and women whose stories remain untold, their truth find the light. A little taste of history.